Hello students, in this video, we'll discuss a Markov chain which corresponds to a random walk around a graph. Let's be given a simple graph. Let's say this is node one, this is node two, and this is node three. I'm going to do a simple random walk around this. I'm gonna go from one to three with probability of half, and from one to two with probability of half, from two to three with probability of half, from two to one with probability of half, and from three to two with probability of half, and three to one with probability of half. So all these halves. So there's never a state that you remain in. You always are moving in this chain over here, like that. That's what our chain looks like. With all probabilities one half. So if I write down the matrix, P would be zero. You go from one to one with probability zero, one half, one half, and then uh, one half, one half, one half is zero, of course. One half is zero. Oh, that's a zero right there. One half, then a one half, one half, zero. That's my Markov matrix. This is a Markov matrix. Corresponding to this Markov chain. Okay. And I want to know the long time behavior of the chain or like the equilibrium state of what's going to happen over here, the equilibrium distribution or the steady state distribution. So what we're going to do is the following. We can note that lambda equals one is an eigenvalue with eigenvector, this is always true for Markov chains, with eigenvector one, 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 transpose, of course. And of course, we can see that if I had a one half on the diagonal over here, I'd have a matrix with one halves everywhere, and that would be a rank one matrix. So I know from that analysis that lambda equals um, negative one half, negative one half, will be an eigenvalue. With what? Well, I can, do, I can choose two eigenvectors. I can choose the eigenvector a one. If, if there's one halves everywhere over here in the matrix, I can do a negative one, then a zero, then a one. Or I could do a negative one, a one, and a zero. Those are two independent eigenvectors that correspond to that eigenvalue. So now I can diagonalize my Markov matrix, and that's how we find the long-term states of these matrices. So P is therefore equal to negative one, uh, negative one, one, then a zero, one, one, zero, one, one, times my eigenvalue negative one half, then a zero, then a zero, then a zero, then a negative one half, then a zero, then a zero, then a zero, and a one. And then the inverse of this matrix, you can check that that's going to be equal to negative one third, negative one third, two thirds, and then a, um, let's see here, a negative one third, a two thirds, a negative one third and then a one-third, a one-third, and a one-third, okay? That, of course, is the inverse of that matrix. So notice that these two matrices over here are inverses of each other, and you can check that. It's a good calculation, okay? That's my diagonalized structure of these things. So now what I can do is I can now note that p to the power n, if we raise this to the power n, what will happen? If I raise p to the power n, for diagonalized matrices, it just becomes this matrix over here to the power n. So what's happening is n goes to infinity over here. As n goes to infinity, what's going to happen to this matrix? As n goes to infinity, what matrix do we get? We're going to get this matrix over here, a 1, a negative 1, and a 1, a 0, a 1, and a 1, a 1, a 0, and a 1. And then this matrix over here, this negative one half to the end, negative one half to the end goes to zero. So that will go to a zero, 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 a one. And then this matrix over here, a one, negative one third, negative one third, two thirds, then negative one third, a two thirds, a negative one third, a one third, a one third, and a one third, okay? And so now let's do this calculation and sort of see what, we get, what we're gonna get out of this over here. So what we're gonna get, is we're going to get, well, what's this matrix over here going to do? This matrix over here is going to give me a um, row dot column, a zero, a zero, and a zero. So I'm going to get a zero. So my first matrix is negative one, negative one, one, and then a zero, a one, and a one, and then a one, a zero, and a one. Let's do this first matrix calculation over here. I get a zero, I get a zero, and I get a zero. So row dot column, row dot column, row dot column gives me all zeros. Again, row dot column, row dot column, row dot column gives me all zeros. And then row dot column, I'm gonna do a one third, a one third, and a one third. I'm gonna do row dot column over here. So one third, one third, one third. Okay, great. And so now what's this limiting matrix over here? So now if I do this calculation, the first row, the first matrix is gonna be what? I'm going to have a one third, then a one third, then a one third, and then what's gonna happen for the next one? I'm gonna get a one third, one third, one third, and a one third one-third, one-third. And so this is the limiting matrix of our Markov chain. So that's our Markov chain matrix. 
And so you can notice it's perfectly symmetric over here. So in other words, what are these, um, what are these rows over, these columns over here, all these columns are, have the same value, right? And so that's beautiful, so now what we can do is let's actually take this vector one third, one third, one third, and sort of plug it into our matrix over here on the right. So if I look at one third, one third, one third, that. with our original Markov matrix, zero, one half, one half, and then one half, zero, one half, and then uh, one half, one half, zero. So if I took that, one of the columns of this matrix over here, what would this be? Well, let's see, I get a, let's see, I'm gonna get a, it's gonna be row dot column. It's gonna be uh, zero, then half of a third, plus half of a third, that's a third, a third, and a third. So in other words, that is a right eigenvector over here, and so this is my equilibrium distribution. So this is my stationary, distribution. In other words, if I plug in, if I, if I start with probability, if I start with probability being one third of being at one, one third of being at three, one third of being at two, what will happen in this chain is that I'll, I'll just keep, per, those probabilities will persist. Then after one step, there'll be a third of a probability at one, two, or three. So in other words, if I start the chain, if the chain starts with one third, one third, one third, it will go to one third, one third, one third distribution. It'll go to one third, one third, one third distribution. So that's my steady distribution for this Markov chain. Thank you very much.